Um, it is a little bit, there's just a few of us in our big council room today, so um, I can see more of you online, so welcome. We'll start with a karakia and then we'll get into the, um, the rest of the meeting. And um, would us in the room please stand for the karakia and then online you don't really need to. Whakataka te hau ki te uru, whakataka te hau ki te tonga. Ki a mā kina kina ki uta, ki a mā tara tara ki tai. E hi ake ana te atakura, he tio, he huka, he hauhu, ti hei mauriora. Wonderful, and while that karakia talks about ceasing o oh, the winds of the west, um, I think we needed to ask for the ceasing of the rain instead, but that's okay. Um, yes, we've got big rain in Wellington, I'm assuming across the region this morning. Okay, um, so yes, tēnā koto kato no mai ki te hui o Wellington Region Waste Management and Minimisation Plan Joint Committee um, i tēnei rā. So welcome everyone to today's, to today's Regional Waste Management and Minimisation Committee, Joint Committee. Uh, please let me or the Democracy Service Advisor, Heidi, here know if you intend to leave the meeting. Um, morning tea will be Morena, Councillor Lee. No, no, all good. Um, yeah. <laughs> well done. Uh, morning tea will hopefully be at 10.30am, but who knows, we might even finish by then, which would be good. Um, and if you are in the building um, and you are not from Wellington City Council, I might need to ask for clarification. Oh yes, no, we encourage you to remain masked while moving about the chamber, the lifts and in the gallery. Um, and in other common areas. But while we're in here, we do not need to be masked, which is great. Awesome. So, um, apologies. Do we have any um, apologies for this morning? We have one um, apology from Councillor Elliott for lateness. Is there anyone else at this time? Uh, he is here. He doesn't have a camera. Councillor Elliott is also there, but doesn't have a camera. Okay. <laughs> so if you do not have your camera on, we cannot see you. So we um, would love it, but fully appreciate that sometimes it is it is a uh, a challenge being on screen all the time. So Sorry. Uh, oh, we have apologies from David Hopman. So as you all might know, he's now CEO of NDC. Right. So um, I'll come in his place today, Jodine. Great. Okay. Kia ora, Joe. Thank you for being here. Okay, so um, do I have a seconder? So I move the motion that we accept the apologies. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Lee, easy for me to see because he's in the room. Kia ora, everybody. So I now put the motion which has been moved and seconded. Those in favour, please, uh, favour, please raise your hand. And those against, please. Th oh, so those in favour, please raise your hand. And those against, please raise your hand. You see anyone, Heidi? No. Great. Okay. Carried? Yeah. Great. I declare the motion carried. Um, conflict of in interest declarations. I call on members to declare any conflicts of interest they may have in relation to the items on the agenda. I see none. Great, okay, so um, I don't need to move the motion then. Great. So then the confirmation of minutes. E whaka ta koto ana au i te mōtini. Um, no, that's, I move the motion. So I call on members to declare any conflicts of interest. No, we're doing that. So just confirmation of minutes. Um, do we have a seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Is there any debate? Um, I, I would like to speak. I just want to note that... Um, Item three, which was about directing officers to prepare a letter for each territorial authority 
and the Wellington Region on behalf of Wellington Regional Waste Minimisation Plan Joint Committee. Um, this was really about the, um, sees the process as a further opportunity to strengthen action, encourage to take action, account actions or commitments towards the goal into the up and coming long term plans. Did we actually do that letter in the end? So that was um, December last year. Great. Can you get back to us after? I don't think it did I, because Councillor Boone, it was um, delegate to the chair and deputy chair of the joint committee the final authorisation of letters to each territorial authority. But yeah, it would be good to have an update on that. Thank you. Okay, so um, with that, we will. I move the motion to confirm the minutes, seconded by Councillor Edwards. Can you all um, say, raise your hand if you are in agreement? Great, that has been carried. Okay, so um, we now move into the um, body of work, which is. Um, Oh, sorry, items not on the agenda. I'm racing ahead of myself. Um, so today there are no official items not on the agenda, but I did just want to bring up a couple of things um, for note. Does anyone else have any items that are not on the agenda that they'd like to put forward today? Nope, I don't see anything. So um, what I did just want to bring up is that our, we have been, as you'll most likely be aware, a strategic waste planning over, um, process going on within Wellington City Council, and there's an overview paper coming to Council today. So um, I just want to flag that WCC will be asked to confirm their role to work regionally and develop a revised regional waste minimisation plan. And this is a response to the roadmap um, yeah, just to align our work towards this plan. So why I wanted to flag it with you was just so that you know if there was any debate around the council table this week that you were aware that, that, that we were going to be having that debate today. Um, but as part of that, I did just want to invite you all after the meeting just for an informal chat about about that and how we are working together and just get a sense check of any views. Um, you are welcome to stay or um, or you don't need to, but that's just something I would like us to do if we have the, the opportunity. Okay, so moving along, um, public participation. We don't have any today. Um, and actually this, this committee doesn't really ever get a lot of public participation. So I was wondering if that was an opportunity in the future that when people do, I know that we have the waste forum and that tends to take up a lot of our public participation. But um, yeah, just let anyone know that there is this opportunity as well next year. Great, okay, and so now we move into general business where we have the um, Regional Waste Management and Minimisation Plan update. So I would like to uh, know my um, Emma Richardson, Mayor Emily Taylor Hall to introduce the report um, and we'd love any other staff to provide an update as well. Um, but we'll start and hand it over to you, Emma. Thank you. Um, this report just really gives us a, a, pro, a progress update on the implementation of the WMMP, which we um, gave effect to in 2017. I think the key points that it um, indicates is the achievement of our um, originally consistent bylaws, which has been a significant achievement for our councils, um, and then the current work project, which is the implementation of the National Waste Data Framework and the establishment of licensing. Um, and then I think the other key point from a regional perspective, it highlights that um, one of the actions in a, an agreed regional action is to investigate um, and, if feasible, develop resource recovery, the extension of resource recovery and the advancement of a resource recovery network. And we can see from our individual TA actions that we are advancing um, that regional action um, and Wellington City Council have some work underway as well that will sort of uh, pull that together into a regional lens as well. 
So that, that's the key, uh, key points from a regional perspective. Um, and then the uh, appendix to the report is an update from each individual TA on the progress they're making towards the implementation of the individual action plans. So I can't speak to those points, but um, I'll invite other officers to do that. I guess I'm finally with the other key point in here is the, um, the work ahead, looking forward for the next 18 months, which is the remainder of the WMMP. Um, and that is we're entering the review phase now for the WMMP, and that will commence next year. Um, we will be commissioning a waste assessment, um, and at this stage that will be advanced regionally, so that will give us a really, um, a really sound regional picture um, with what's happening with waste uh, based on the data that we can um, establish. Um, and that will be useful because it will inform the development of the next waste management and minimisation plan, whether that be at an individual TA level or at a regional level. And that's, that's it in a nutshell, I think. Happy to take any questions, though. Great. Kia ora, Emma. That's um, very exciting that we're um, moving along. Does anyone have any questions? Jill, was that a... Oh, Councillor Edwards. Just Far unmute away. myself here. I was really pleased to read in several places that um, it's planned to, for Wellington and Hutt anyway, to begin a study into organic and food waste collection and how that might work. Have, is there, has funding, have we got funding for that study? Is it going to be a very expensive study? Um, <laughs> um, there's no funding available um, for that study. I think working together for this report's really highlighted that we both have the same objectives and we both want to do the same thing. So I think establishing a work plan for what that looks like um, will commence in the new year and that will probably be funded um, by the two councils seeking to do that work. But I think certainly from a... Um, a regional perspective would be would welcome any other input or support f to look at um, organic processing options. Um, yeah, and and it's a big work program really, and we're looking forward to the long term plan, the next long term plan. So that that would be a significant piece of work. Thanks, Councillor Edwards. Just to, I'm just going to put in a question to on the back of that. Um, I note that one of our recommendations is to to note that we might need to be putting in some funding, but more for the 23-24 annual plan. But um, can we just check that if there is funding required to do that scope work, that officers will let us know for the annual plan process? If it is needed. At, at this stage, Wellington City Council uh, um, have that in their budgets to look at organics processing. So we're, we're welcome. We'd welcome widening that to a, a regional contribution from officers. But certainly, there's no budget implications for a Wellington City Council. So we we have that covered. Okay, that's great. It's not implementation. It's just the investigation. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I fully appreciate <laughs> the implementation might be a bigger discussion. Yes. Um, but great. But maybe that would be just a highlight for officers that if we do feel like we do want to contribute to that together, it wouldn't be a lot, and that would be a good time to to come forward. Um, Yearn, I can see your hand up, and I'm assuming it's on the same thread of conversation. Otherwise, yeah. Councillor Lee was ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just on the same thread, but from a from a Hutt City Council um, perspective. So, so the organics work is on the is certainly on the draft on, on the work program, and and I'm actually not so much worried about the money side of things um, because with the waste levy increasing, there is some increasing funding available at our end. So I'm not so worried about that. But there is one key risk that is increasingly rearing its head and that that more than anything else may actually delay work and that's the the issue of getting staff um there is a resource shortage across new zealand um, some of you will be aware of this um, it's very difficult to get skilled labor at the moment uh, we've got two uh roads out for advertising at the moment and it's it's not very um it's not looking very uh positive at the moment so, so obviously, without that, you know, without staff uh, and skilled labour, we we can't necessarily do some of that work. So that's probably the bigger risk at the moment. I just wanted to um, alert you to. 
Thanks, Jern. And um, I, I note that it, it's probably the most um, talked about issue for us in count across council generally at the moment. And I wonder if that's also worthwhile just putting as a note because um, it's easy to forget that, that the operational, you know, just being able to resource this work can be a challenge. Um, I'll just put that on the notes for later. Councillor Lee. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just to pick up on Ewan's point, I think that the labour force uh, is, I think it's across all skill levels, skilled and unskilled, because at Greater Wellington we're finding problems with the um, environmental sector, even that, that's kind of semi-skilled, and even public transport. So I think it's a, it's a problem across all sectors and, and all levels. And anyway, my, my question for you, Emma, is um, just picking up on uh, like COVID, uh, I know anecdotally it's uh, the CBDs had a, probably a 20, 25% downturn in terms of waste, but that's probably not necessarily a waste reduction, is it? It's probably just been displaced to, to um, the outer suburbs. Sorry, I, I can't personally answer that question, but I don't know if Emily may be able to provide some clarity. No, I would guess it's probably just Displaced. at home yeah. as opposed to at work. Mm. What, what about this, this uh, issue I picked up uh, probably last week at, at the Waste Forum that um, because w with COVID, there's this germophobic kind of mindset so we're using, we're not using a lot of plastics, we're not using <coughs> reusable um, cups and so forth, so, and a lot of use of um, single-use disposable material. Is, is, is that, um, has that seen, has that seen a little bit of a setback for, for the waste minimisation uh, plan? I think it's um, a very real implication um, of COVID, but, um, We'll know after our waste assessment if it's had a significant impact on our on the waste trends around, and we'll be able to compare it from the 2016 data. So I think that would be quite interesting. So we should know by the end of next year um, whether it's a, a, a significant change in their system mm. overall waste. So it could just be just a, a momentarily blip, isn't it? Because I think there's desire to minimise waste, but because of COVID, it's just set us back a few steps. Thank you. Anyone else with any questions? Um, I have I have a couple of questions. Um, one was on paragraph forty six. The um, shared governance and service delivery not yet progressed. Um, can you just outline that and yeah, what as it's a statutory requirement? But yeah, how are we going and what will that look like? in terms of action? Um, I think that there are statutory requir requirements to consider um, how we provide our levels of service when there is a significant service change. Um, and there is a criteria in the um, Local Government Act as to when that Section 17A review is required. So um, I think at this stage, we are defaulting to that provision to trigger to um, to really plan the shared governance and service delivery or to consider that. So it um, hasn't been considered as there's been no change, um, certainly from Wellington City Council perspective, but other TAs may be in a different position. Hmm. Um, I can comment on that. If that um, so, so usually um, these sort of reviews are done when major contracts come up. Um, and certainly that's one we would have we we have done as part of our procurement strategy for Silver Stream landfill operations for the new contractor that we're looking at identifying for next year. Um, so so we we always need to undertake one of those um, reviews um, and it's basically just involves an analysis of whether the current arrangement is still the best uh, suitable structure. Um, at least at our end, it hasn't resulted in a change yet. So uh, th that doesn't mean that there wouldn't be some opportunities in the future, though. So it's, it's uh, more, pro probably more of a placeholder at the moment um, than a specific work program. Great, and I do appreciate there is a lot on the work program. Um, but yes, I would I would like to see that um, that conversation progressed. Even. Um, 
So is there a time frame for that, or is it just a placeholder to, to just keep there? There is no time frame for that. At the moment, um, I think they are listed in order of regional priority, so um, we are obviously focusing on the, um, the key projects at this yeah. stage, and it's, it's not considered a priority, but it is... There. Important. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, great. Well, I would encourage um, that within the next two years, we're at least starting to have that conversation. I think it's important to keep an eye on that, um, especially as, um, yes. There could be some opportunities and check that we are on track and we've got the best model possible. Okay, um, any other questions out there? Okay, from me, um, there was just one, but it actually fell into Carpetes, but I, I thought it was a regional-wide one, was the, the Waste Sort website. Is that being run through Carpetes or is that a regional? I think the... Um Currently, the waste, sort waste, I think. Yes. Um, yep. That work to develop a website was, um, it wasn't progressed uh, last year because there wasn't enough support. At that stage, um, there was also awareness that it would, it was, would take a significant funding contribution. So we still um, have that on the radar. We're considering uh, alternatives to the option um, for the region, so that work remains ongoing, but not necessarily targeted at sort waste. But the principle of mm. um, shared communications yeah. across the region related to waste. Yeah, great. Okay. And I appreciate that the communications aspect are really outward facing, um, but I think sometimes I feel like we, we need that as this committee to have that outward facing um, opportunity to connect the region in a waste journey. So um, I do encourage you um, to keep an eye on that as a, as a tool or a vehicle to help communicate what we are doing as a regional committee, but also with a plan um, and uh, yeah, that would be good. Um, any other questions or just from me? Um, I guess one question I have, which I, I would like each of the TAs to just up, update if they could, if they have any um, understanding of if there's been an increase or a reduction in waste to landfill from each council as part of the annual report, reports, that would, be, that would be great. Thank you. Councillor Edwards. Um, yeah, so we're delving into the... Uh individual council ones now, and I've a, a question for you, and I guess, uh, even though he's just told us that um, there's real staff issues, so a bit of a, a maybe a, a difficult one, but I see that Wellington and Upper Hutt, Yearn have got um, battery recycling initiatives underway at the likes of Noel Leeming and so on. I don't know whether that's a council-driven thing or whether those companies have stood up, uh, stepped up there, but is there any chance of seeing that similar sort of thing happen in Lower Hutt? Uh, so yeah, on that specifically, that that is down to we just don't have the staff or people at right. the to even look at that. Um, so uh, to, and to give you an idea, uh, we employed a senior advisor, Wasteman, in July, who was in Australia, couldn't come over. Uh, we've literally a couple of weeks ago had to pull the pin because she's not likely to come over at all now. So we're now going out again. Um, so and that's going to take another three months. So, so I'm aware of some of those uh, smaller initiatives that are floating around, and and some of that would be nice to support, but we just don't have the the people, our all capability at the moment to run anything uh, in addition to what we're already doing. Fair enough. Thanks. Um, just maybe just one additional comment though. Um, I am also conscious that there is um work underway through partly facilitated through central government around um. Uh, product stewardship scheme for e-waste and uh, batteries. So my view would also be that, yes, there's a role for councils to play in terms of facilitating some of this, but ultimately I think there needs to be more government drive to actually formalise take-back schemes such as those. Um, and, and I don't know, the, unfortunately, I haven't had time to have a look at where things are at um, in terms of those product stewardship, stewardship schemes. 
uh, and hopefully we're not too far away because they've been um, on the radar for a couple of years now. I don't know if any of the other officers have any further information on where that is at. But Can Ruth, I comment on that? Yeah. So I've been the TA rep on the uh, Circular Estuaries Network, which is the um, part of the group formed by Tech Collect to um, co design the uh, product stewardship scheme for electronic goods. So they have got to the point of preparing their final report that has been submitted to the ministry and then. What, what they've identified is that there's still quite a number of pieces of work that need to be done to move to the next stage. Um, but I think that it is underway. It does include batteries. It includes anything with a cord, uh, anything that's electronic waste, uh, excluding the uh, car batteries, which um, sit under the, the big scheme. Um, and... So it's a work in progress, but to be honest, it's probably still two years out. So I, I guess if councils have opportunities to put in battery recycling, and I think we've noted in our report that this is something in addition if we're going to look at soon, it will just help continue momentum around um, e-waste collections and e-waste product stewardship and just fill in the gap until that um, mandated priority product stewardship um, scheme is in place. Kia ora, thanks Ewan and thanks Ruth and couldn't agree more with the product stewardship. Um, would have been wonderful if we were ahead of the game and um, while well, there were lots of people um, that were able to be employed um, a few years ago, but there you go, we are where we are. Um, next on the, actually I have one more question, it's understanding on paragraph 35, investigations into the chain of custody of collected recycling materials. Can I just get an understanding of what that means? Um, I think Yearn will probably be in the best position. Yeah, that I, I can. That's I can a fancy that. new term, Yearn. <laughs> uh, yeah, for it's me, a little for bit. Me. <laughs> We always need a few extra um, special terms to keep people yeah, on their keep toes. everyone on their toes. Thank you. Uh, now, so this work um, has come around, has come about, um, was initiated through our city council, and, and the context is that we've rolled out our new service, um, which kicked down first of July. So that's the new recycling bin um, and separate glass collection, and um, so the. The, the starting point for this was that we now have a new methodology and we do have quite um, tight contract terms around what must happen with those materials. But we also, um, I'm also conscious that occasionally, and, and some of you will be aware of this, get, get the odd question from the media or, or residents and saying, well, we don't believe, you know, it goes to where it should be going. So what I would like, so, so the starting point for this work was really, can we get some independent assurance um, to basically say, um, yes, it is going where it's supposed to go uh, and, um, and give us some better, basically independent assurance on what, what happens in the system. So, so glass goes to Visi and, um, you know, PET goes to say flight plastics and other plastics go to, you know, whatever other places they go to. And, um, and I'm conscious that contractors are often not very willing to share some of the IP or the exact uh, destinations of where that material goes to. So that's another reason why we're looking at, why we're engaging an independent um, consultant to basically do the checking for us and give us that assurance. And, and then that means that the contractors are perhaps a little bit more willing to share the information with them if they're not willing it, to share it with us. So that's kind of the starting, that's, that was the starting point. Um, we, uh, we're working together with this, this particular one uh, because we use waste management as our provider, which is also used by um, Upper Heart City Council for the recycling station and Porirua for their service. Um, it's those three councils that are collaborating on this particular um, initiative. I did extend an offer to Wellington and City, but I, I'm assuming, while well, there wasn't any feedback on this, on that's, that's we're progressing this uh, just among Porirua, Upper Hutt and Lower Hutt at the moment. Does that, does that make sense? 
Yes, thank you. Sorry, I was writing down furiously. Yep. Um, that's really interesting because, um, yeah, that, that sounds like a great piece of work. And sadly, um, I do get contacted by a lot of businesses in Wellington who have found out that their um, yeah, recycling hasn't ended up where, where they thought it was going and they've been quite upset, but too kind to go public. <laughs> um, so yes, it's, it's an issue. So that, that's great. Thank you for that explanation and for the work. Okay, I think that's getting to the end of this. So, yeah, just, just a reminder, I'd love an update on if we're seeing any reduction in waste just from our annual plan reports. Um, but maybe now we can move into each of the TAs. Unless there was anything else, Emma, did you want to add anything on that? Great. Okay. So then we'll move into um, Wellington City Council action plan update. So that means Emma, you're still <laughs> you're still in the hot seat. <laughs> um, I think I think the focus for us is on what's ahead, um, looking forward. Um, and as you uh, noted, we have a, a battery recycling service. Um, we're still in contract negotiations for that, but we had hoped that would be up and running this month. It doesn't look like that's going to happen because we're still working on the contract detail, but that should be in the new year that that will be up and running. Um, we're also um, commissioning our work to review our curbside waste service system, waste and recycling across the city, um, and we're looking at um, standard residential dwellings, we're differentiating multi-unit dwellings to see what service uh, service level needs and cost considerations that would have if we were to change that level of service. Um, and we're also factoring in the commercial needs in the central business area, um, which currently don't have access to a Wellington City Council service. So that's a significant piece of work that's underway. Um, obviously, licensing is a major piece of work for the region but also for Wellington City Council, and then looking at our food waste uh, processing options um, next year and over the next 18 months. Um, and then beyond that, we're looking at resource recovery um, and getting a, a very clear strategic direction on how we want to take that forward um, to provide that to our councillors so they can make some key decisions on that. Um, that will probably be early to mid next year. And, and that's really it, unless you have any questions about our program. That's, that's what I'd like to focus on. Um, does anyone have any questions for Paul Nicky? Councillor Lee. I oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just with, with regard to battery recycling, um, have, you been, have you been working with like the Netherlands Embassy? Because I think they've, they did a joint um, program with um, the Sustainability Trust with battery re recycling. I think that was quite successful. I think they kicked it off about four or five years ago. Uh, no, we haven't worked with that party, but we did. Um, we ran a tender process to a range of parties and invited um, proposals. So that's that's where we okay. we're at. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, I, ha I have a couple. Um, the landfill capacity review, Wellington City Council and Hutt City Council Pororo to discuss the matter of landfill capacity at a regional landfill closure. This request for dialogue will be in line with the Council's agreed action to work in collaboration with other councils to review landfill capacity with potential for closure of one landfill regionally in the future. That's, that's right. So that, that is actually a Wellington City Council action that has implications on the rest of the region. So um, it's a very difficult action to implement um, because it's actually... It, it, it didn't go forward in the WMP as a regional action. There wasn't, um, there, it wasn't considered and there wasn't support for it. It went through as a Wellington City Council action, so um, officers will be preparing a letter to um, other councils, um, Hutt and Porirua, to see if there's a willingness to have a conversation about that. And that's, that's about the extent of what we can do um, in terms of regional dialogue um, at this stage. Great, okay, thank you. That was good to understand that it wasn't a regional, but it was a Wellington city action. Okay, so so that will be a good discussion, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ideally, it would be good if we didn't have any waste to worry about, and then we wouldn't need to have the discussion. Um, and just one more question was um, the um, public place recycling um, stopping. I thought that was a good one just to highlight. Maybe, I don't know if any other councils have public place recycling, um, but could you just unpack that a little bit? Emma? I, I could try, but you yeah. probably be a better place to, okay. to do that. <laughs> this is an awkward conversation because I know Upper Hutt have just installed them. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, <didn't mean> to. <laughs> um, I guess from Wellington City's perspective, um, it was, um, I, I think it worked out, um, I can't remember the figures off the top of my head, there is a, a council report on it, but I think it worked out about $6,000 per tonne, um, and we just felt that there was probably um, better ways to spend that funding. That says it all. Um, can, I, can I just um, add one comment to that, even though it's not related to my council? So so upper, so Hutt City Council, we, we went out of, we removed the last public place recycling bins uh, just over a year ago, and for the very same reasons. So, so in terms of cost per ton of recycling collected, it's an order of magnitude higher than what happens at the curb site, and you're dealing with usually high contamination. Mm. Um, so, I'm I'm not surprised that um, you know Wellington has decided to do that uh, in the same way that I guess we've gone a year earlier. Um, there are there are more effective ways. Uh, to to spend that money to recover to recover, recover recycling and and things like you know product stewardship schemes and other initiatives have a key role to play as opposed to trying to capture capture everything uh, with an ambulance at the bottom of the cliff mm. um, with there's only so many bins you can plaster around the city and most people when they walk past they'll just throw anything in there so um, yeah I think uh, good decision as far as I can tell. <laughs> Great. Okay. Well, it's good to have the shared learning, and um, I hope there's good dialogue between councils just to understand the learnings, and then maybe I understand Upper Hutt has a different system altogether, so it may have a different response, but sure you'll let us know. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, so we'll move along from Wellington to Carpety. Great. Kia ora, Carpety. Welcome. And would you like to give us an update? Kia ora. Um, not too much more to say other than what's in the report, but I will comment on public place recycling. We have one set down at the Claim Park, which is at Paraparuma Beach. Um, we're actually doing weather permitting and other audits today, but it has been quite highly contaminated and um, I won't preempt any decision because uh, we need to do a report and we'll make an operational decision based on that, but given it's ended up running a bit close to Christmas. We'll run it through the Christmas period anyway. That will give us an opportunity for, for, for a further audit. Um, I agree with Yoon's comment that, you know, there is going to be a lot more product stewardship um, opportunities. And also, um, it's all very well to say, let's put out public place recycling, but I think there's an opportunity for behaviour change and actually saying, like, I mean, all the bottles that people buy, for example, for water, you know, there's other things you can do, like a big promotion by Reef or New Zealand to say uh, either don't make that waste in the first place or potentially um, take your waste home and not provide bins at all, which is certainly a view that some, some councils um, put out there as well. So, um with regard to my report, so I have commented on the Community Timber Initiative at Zero Waste Autarky. They uh, were just awarded some more funding through our Waste Levy Grants Program and they've got enough to get a cover. So they now have four containers on site, uh, making kind of a U, and they'll be putting a cover across one of them. So that was, will significantly enhance their activity and will be, is the final part of their setup. Um, we had a very successful waste forum. We didn't go as far as zero waste or tucky, but I think they'll be well on the way. So uh, we'll put that on the agenda for uh, next November. Um, but we did have a site visit to Earth Starch and to Composting New Zealand. And um, uh, overall, I think the day went very well. Uh, it is noted in my report and has been commented on, but there is a proposal on the table that's been sent to officers this week um, around the One Planet.
website we've had a big opportunity with um, a company that I'm liaising with who has offered to become a partner and basically sponsor a lot of the costs and claims by setting up the site. All we have to do is do simply subscriptions. So um, that's up to over to um, officers at the moment to decide on the level of commitment and hopefully we can report back on that uh, further. Yep, and that's all I had notes on. So are there any questions? Any questions for Carpety? Great. No. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, Ruth. I've got questions. <laughs> um, it just sign up quick enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, that sounds very exciting. So does the One Planet, what, what is the objective of the website? The objective is to provide actually uh, a, a national and regional uh, platform for waste minimisation advice. So it's, it's really a portal. I mean, it's been running for about five years. Um, Wellington, a number of the um, councils in this region have already been sponsors. And then we've got the salt waste material on the side. So what we want to do is re-establish the One Planet platform and then look at how we kind of give it some regional flavour as well, have some regional subsections or, you know, um, and, and integrate the materials from salt waste um, as well as, you know, other materials and just provide that linkage to, um, to resources um, I've been asked by, there are some secondary school resources on there that are actually NCEA level, um, and I've been asked by the uh, by the writer actually if we can put, bring those uh, online again so that they can start pushing those again through high schools because there is, there is definitely a lot of interest in resources and waste minimisation and, you know, and there's, there's so much happening. So the idea is to have one place that offers sort of a starting point, really. We don't want to rewrite anyone's material. We want to introduce all the amazing stuff that's happening, like, again, again, New York. We talked about it at the Waste Forum. Polly had it in her presentation, that there's so much happening that it's just getting those messages out there. Great. OK, um, we'll look forward to an update on that um, at the right time. That's awesome. Um, and I did just want to congratulate you um, on the, yeah, the Zero Waste Autaki Trust presentation um, was really inspiring. So it was great to see the work that they're doing. And, uh, yeah, we at Wellington City just funded a, a similar but a different flavour. And so to be, yeah, I might try and hook those two up so that they can, yeah, learn off each other. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay, I'll thanks. pass that on because yeah, James do, was do, nervous do. as hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it was very inspiring, so thank you. Thank you. Great. Um, okay, so next on our um, list is Upper Hutt. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so, uh, probably one of the biggest notes, in which we've talked about a bit this morning, is the battery recycling collection uh, trial that we have underway. Um, so, this is a short term initiative, um, and as talked about earlier, product stewardship and the likes of will hopefully uh, come in over the top at some stage, but in the meantime, we have engaged with Upcycle to do our battery collection and it's a prepaid system. So all the buckets and um, the businesses have had that uh, financial burden removed. Um, and this was funded through our hazardous waste budget. Um, that's been successful to date. Um, so a couple of the businesses um, filled up their buckets really quickly and that was because um, members of the community have been holding back batteries, which uh, is fantastic. It means they weren't putting it in their general waste. And so that solution um, was greatly received. Um, we're looking at expanding our recycling station again. <laughs> um, 
there hopefully that will commence next year at some point and we are also recruiting a recycling station officer to help manage that facility the purpose of that is to try and reduce uh, contamination in the bins which uh, has um, not been a huge issue at this moment um, but um, there's also a chance for um, education face to face with the public and um, just managing their concerns on site. Um, the public place recycling bins, uh, again, is another topic that is being uh, talked about today. Um, these are in our Maestro Max park, and this project was um, so far been really successful, um, but that is uh, just through observation. I don't have any data. Um, there has been some contamination and uh, trying to get data from um, our service provider uh, has been a bit tricky, so I'm watching this space very carefully. Um, we have just recently launched our Mohio Para WasteWise campaign uh, that kicked off earlier this week. Um, this is a reframing of our council website. Um, and a new look for waste minimisation for Upper Hutt. This is by no means a um, replacement of any regional initiative. This is uh, for us to be able to engage a conversation with our residents. And uh, this came from a conversation and recommendations out of our long-term plan, where our, our councillors had asked us to engage with the public and specifically around recycling. And so this uh, scope was brought in. This piece of work was due to kick off uh, earlier this year, but I delayed it because I wanted to scope it out to include the whole waste hierarchy. Um, and I'm really uh, proud of this piece of work, and I think it's going to be a great platform for our community. Um, I'm also engaging heavily with the um, our uh, wider community on composting. We have a group. Uh, that wants to engage with um, local businesses to start doing food waste collection. Um, so the sort of uh, organic from the bottom up approach, um, I think is fantastic and I'll support them where I can on this initiative. Um, that's about it, really, any questions? Questions for Council? Oh, Councillor Lee. Oh, again, oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Just the, the battery um, collection, that's only just for controlled disposal, isn't it? Not for recycling. Is that correct? Or do you uh, it is, recycle? No, it is uh, being recycled in Australia. Okay. So it uh, gets shipped up to Auckland where they do the sorting and then um, they hold the basal permit to ship it over to a company in Australia. Now, I don't know which company that is. That's uh, tight-lipped. Um, but my understanding is that it does get separated out and recycled in its various elements. Okay, yep. oh, thank you. Any other questions? Um, I have a question. Was it just recently you've launched a climate change fund? Was that up a hut? Yes. Yeah. Yep. So can waste be part of that initiative? It is, but it's run through our sustainability team, right. which okay. is uh, operational and strategic. Um, I administer the Environment and Waste Minimisation Fund, which is a bit smaller, and that is also in conjunction with um, a sustainability uh, team, but this is a, um, a sustainability stimulus grant for businesses for larger projects. Yep. Um, if Steve Taylor wants to talk more about that initiative, he's more than welcome to. Yeah, I, I can jump in here. So, so uh, we're trying a sustainability stimulus fund. Uh, so we've, it, we've budgeted $100,000. Um, how it works is uh, businesses, organisations, members of the public are allowed to apply um, as long as they meet the criteria of the policy. Um, the minimum application is $12,500. Um, based on that, you can receive up to 40% of, of your projects to be funded. Um, with a minimum funding of $5,000. Um, so far, there's been quite a bit of interest, although I don't think the first round closes until I think it's February, off the top of my head, next year. Um, and basically, it covers a wide range of sustainability initiatives as long as they align with our sustainability strategy. So that can include waste. Um, and certainly, we're encouraging businesses to apply. Yep. Great, that's exciting. Um, 
Thank you for that. And um, yes, I'd just like to commend you on the community composting and collection and support and the bottom up. Like I think that really does work from a community aspect. It's something um, they can con communities can control or work together on, and I think it has multiple benefits. Yeah, thank you. I um, uh, think there's a lot of value in allowing the community to um, engage with their community as well mm. um, and help facilitate them. And I do see my role as um, being a facilitator for the council and supporting the community in that way. Yep. Great. And um, you never know where we'll get to next. If there's something communities can work on together, it could... You know, I see it as a big opportunity to grow. Yeah, there's a number of initiatives uh, that Wellington um, and also Hutt City have around free waste collection and from a community level, so um, we are looking at those. Great. Yep. Good. Good opportunity there. Okay, thank you, Upper Hutt. And next is Porirua. Kia ora, welcome. Kia ora, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I've got um, a report here, which I just will point out um, one, well, the, the major issue we have right now, which is the state of our curbside mm. recycling collection. Um, and um, as per the report, we are continuing to work on getting a crew, uh, two man crew um, on the ground to run ahead of uh, the recycling uh, pickup and um, start stickering bins, which are contaminated with the end goal of a uh, bin, which is repeatedly contaminated, um, actually being withdrawn from service. Um, the other thing, uh, just to pick up on Upper Hutt's point uh, regarding the bulk recycling facility, we've actually only just last week um, brought a fourth container um, into play at the recycling station um, for public use at Spicer Landfill. Um, so that hopefully will, will prevent any of the overflow and allow us to take some of the smaller um, cages off site that we had to put there. Uh, but also um, we've had a staff member actually on site full time as in um, seven days a week, uh, I think for nearly a year now. And um, I can absolutely recommend that um, the site has never been cleaner. Um, the contents of the containers has never been cleaner. I'm told that the, um, the glass uh, that goes into the containers there is absolutely squeaky clean. Um, that manned presence on site at, at a station of that size, I think is an extremely important thing uh, if you can achieve it and it's been working very, very well for us. Um, other than that, um, Chair, I'll just, yeah, any questions that anyone's got? Mm, interesting observation about having the staff member on site. It works at the events as well on a smaller scale, so it's, it's not surprising that that's working. Um, although if you can get staff, that's great. Um, has anyone got any questions for Porirua? Councillor Edwards. Yeah, um, David, thank you for that. It's um, quite an eye-opener to read about the contamination issues that you're having and um, of course, it's of vital interest to the hut as well with our new system. I'm wondering, I don't, I don't know how your rubbish system works, but could, is, is the contamination, do you think, happening because of ignorance of what can go in these bins? Or is it people trying to save on, um, you know, rubbish bags or, or putting stuff, save money on the, on the rubbish collection costs or a mixture of both? It's absolutely a mixture of both. Um, the rubbish service here um, is largely private, although we do have um, council rubbish bags. Uh, in the next week or so, we are actually doing a, a brief, uh, a week-long count-up of how many houses, how many uh, residents are actually using the council rubbish bag. Um, I had been under the impression that it was about 20% of the market. Uh, the rubbish collector tells us it may actually be less than that. So I'm just getting a sanity check. What that means is that if we're falling within, say, the, the 10 to 15 percent of the market, the rest of the market is therefore private. And considering um, the, the, the demographics and the economics of the, of the district, there will be households that can't afford that service. Um, and in fact, at uh, public retail, $3 per rubbish bag. Um, that is also not necessarily affordable for some of our houses, um, unfortunately. So that is definitely one of the issues. Each property does get a council funded, well, rate funded, but council provided recycling bin for mixed recycling and a recycling bin for glass. Um, and unfortunately, that's 
sometimes seen as an easy solution if you can't afford a bag or a pri private use. The other um, aspect of uh, the contamination we've been working on, um, and this is where we've been putting out a lot of our um, pamphlets and social media in a number of different languages, is, um, as you've said, um, Councillor, that misunderstanding of what can actually go there and what can't. Um, with the comment that I've made about our Tuesday um, recycling run going directly to landfill, that was as much a matter of um, health and safety at the receiver's end um, in Petone, as uh, more so than there was the odd item that shouldn't be there. This is um, literally a health and safety issue um, for that particular day. Um, and yeah, but mostly those those two problems. There, there is the cost of the service because our uh, rubbish is private. Um, and then there is that um, being able to get the message through well enough. This is what can go in and this is what can't. Is there anything to be gained, David, between uh, lia liaise? I mean, I think Hutt is, I don't know that our problem is as great as you'd describe, but the last figure I saw was 13% um, contamination of our recycling bins. Is, is there uh, is there anything to be gained from our two councils working together on this in terms of ambassadors, in terms of education, in terms of shared efficiency? Oh, absolutely, yes. Um, and we have spoken with Hutt, um, with Yun and um, Yun staff um, fairly regularly. Um, I know that your contamination level is uh, not at that point by any stretch that, that we're experiencing here. Um, we're talking about contamination over 20% over and, and in excess of. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're not, not in good shape that way. Um, but yes, we certainly do speak to my counterparts at Hutt on a regular basis. Thanks, David. Thanks, David. Just one quick question from me on that, and I am really sorry to hear that, and it is um, hard to read. I wonder if, um, ha have you done any work on, are we, are we the only ones in the world, like are there other uh, cities around the world or the country that have tried to tackle this problem that you've been able to gain some information or ways to deal with it from? Not outside of New Zealand, um, Councillor, but certainly with respect to this um, three strikes process that we've been backed into a corner and, and having to follow, um, there are quite a number of other councils in the country who do this already. Um, so we're not, we're not ahead of um, um, Christchurch or Dunedin or, or Dunedin Hastings by any stretch. There's, there are a number of other councils who are already um, been following this three strikes process for some time. Um, other than that, we have a wealth of um, guidance um, through the likes of Wastelands. Um, I, I won't comment too much further than that. The, um, the issue of how to get good recycling behaviour going actually falls within a, another team, not mine. Um, but yeah, we, we have a lot of guidance available to us. And uh, for us, I think it's just a matter of um, getting the message through over and over and over again. Mm, okay, thank you. No, that's good to know that there is that from Wastemans. Um, yes. Councillor Colenzo. Um, I was just going to add to that, Madam Chair. Um, David, we have the three strike um, process through the yes. South Wire Wrapper and I think the rest of the Wire Wrapper as well. And that Joe can probably fill in a lot better than I can, but I know that that has reduced the contamination. Um, people don't like getting their rubbish back that they have to resort. So um, they tend to do that now in, in the first instance. And uh, that has certainly helped with um, reducing the contamination rates and things like that. But Joe can probably pick up and elaborate a bit more if she doesn't mind. Thanks, Councillor Colenzo. Yeah, I'm happy to talk today if that's you'd like that, David. So um, um, yeah, thank you. Yep. Sure. So um from the from the very start, um, we were quite um overall um around the behaviour change. So we decided right from the start there were some factors that we were really adamant that we needed to get right from the start. 
which was the st three strike rule. Yes, that is correct, we did that. We haven't actually had to remove any bins whatsoever. Um, and that is because like Pam just mentioned, people don't like to know that they'll be the, they get a warning obviously and it goes into the next ones, um, but we've never actually got to the right to the third one. Um, and that's because either people have actually been so humiliated that they've got a sticker, that they've got it wrong, that they've gone back in and fixed it. Um, also from the very start, we had auditing. So I was very adamant that that was gonna happen. Um, so that we didn't have those fallback moments where we had high contamination rates that we were going to go backwards. So we had that for quite a long time. Um, and we just had a mobility scooters, um, not mobility scooters, um, scooters um, and they were checking every bin um, just to ensure. And then and that whole around um, behaviour change really did make a huge difference. So we actually have probably very low contamination rates with our curbside bins. And we have the whole way through. Um, if we've had some tricky bits, um, we've kind of tried to address them in those manners. Um, but we've been very, very fortunate with that. Yep. Um, thank you both. That's encouraging because when I raised this with our own council, um, I suggested that perhaps out of 100 first strikes, we would only be maybe issuing 50 second strikes and then maybe only actually taking one bin away. Um, so if we follow that pattern, that's that's very encouraging. I hope that's um, I hope that's what happens. Yeah. Well, thank you. It, it'll be good to get an update, David. I know everything's yes. time just next time, but it, it's good to learn from these ex experiences. And yeah. Yes, I, I would like to update, Councillor, but just um, so you're aware, by the time we have our next joint meeting, we'll probably still be running the the one month of cold audit if you like um, and then probably if we do take bins away uh the third strike won't be occurring until about may next year but yeah i'll keep you up to date that's all right i think even informally it's just good for us yes. all to be learning from it thank you okay um i've just had a note from haiti and councillor haywood from p uh Puridua, um had sent through an apology um so with the leave of the meeting can i include this in the apologies please so I just need a nod from all councillors or a hands up that they're okay to include that. Great, thank you. And now we're going to take a break. Um, so I suggest we come back at 10.45. Sorry, can um, I ask one question? Yes, kia ora. So it's a question for David and it's uh, in response to the, um, the manning of the um, recycling centre with staff. Um, I'm just wondering how that works in terms of um, staff security and if um, the person who was manning the centre uh, had any issues with people who um, weren't able to drop off their recycling due to contamination and how that was handled if it did occur. Sure, okay, so um, the um, publicly free bulk recycling station is at Spicer Landfill and so happens to be on the other side of the road from Trash Palace, which is our, um, our recovery centre for um, resale, of, um, resale of goods. So from that aspect, it actually has um, quite a good staff presence on site generally, plus um, the area's got a good coverage of security cameras around it. Um, so that person is not working um, in a remote area or where there aren't other people to call on if, if he feels threatened at all. Um, so we're fortunate that way. However, with regard to um, his own safety in terms of um, threatening or abusive behavior, um, that has been a bit of an issue um, for two reasons. Uh, we were, we've set up the bulk recycling facility and we've also um, um, embodied this in the uh, solid waste management and minimization bylaw, which we adopted earlier this year, that that particular facility is for residential use only. We were getting um, hammered with a lot of commercial drop off, particularly small businesses, um, the likes of electricians and plumbers who would drop off an awful lot of cardboard and swamp the containers. So we um, put into our, our new bylaw that it's only for residential use, put the ambassador on site, put some signage up to say this is residential only. And he has had uh, quite a number of uh, very, very grumpy customers who um, previously used to bring them their, their business waste and drop it off. So that's been an issue. Um, and talking to him a few weeks ago, I understand that uh, he does he does take uh, shifts on and off with another staff member. Uh, sometimes it's just to get a break from the place. Um, it's one of those very high public 
facing positions where you're having to enforce something that isn't always popular. Um, so it is difficult. Thanks, appreciate that. Thanks for that question um, and good understanding more about that. Uh, just welcome Councillor Elliott um, and Councillor Elliott, now we're just going to take a break. <laughs> so, um, so actually we'll come back at 10 to now actually, so 10 to 11 we'll be come back and restart the meeting. Thank you everybody.
We're ready to move into an update from the Hutt City Council. Thanks, Jern. Do you want to take that one? Yeah, I can, I can take that away. So um, at Hutt City Council, you will be aware that we've had um, quite a bit of work over the last year focusing on our new curbside rollout. And Councillor Edwards will know all, know all about it. The yes. positive, the bad, the bad, the good and the ugly. Um, so that, that service is now, um, you know, we're still bedding it in, but it is, we're, you know, we've finished off the rollout. So now we're really into the, into the BAU space and um, just picking up on the contamination discussion we just had before the break. Um, so our contamination sits between f uh, 14 and 16% at the moment. And it does still, you know, we're getting data every month. And it does bump around a little bit. So, you know, there's there's some routes in there where it's 10% or slightly less. And we also have some that are, you know, above 20. Um, so it is really quite dependent on uh, the routes and um, on the particular day. Um, so the work we're doing there is, so obviously our bylaw has got the three strikes rule. We haven't applied that yet. Although we have already, we've sent out our first strike letter just the other day. Uh, because they, they were red tagged. They had all sorts of green waste in there um, that they thought was recyclable. So, so it may well be that, you know, with the red tagging of bins and uh, a formal letter, we might actually rectify the issue as David Down just mentioned earlier. Um, ultimately though, if in order to protect the system, we, we, we are quite prepared to go down the path of saying, well, actually, if, if you're not fixing it, then the, the service will need to be suspended. Whether or not that means the bin will be taken away is sort of a separate question. Um, ultimately, the, the issue is more around suspending a service as opposed to taking a bin away. Uh, so that's on the, on the compliance or the enforcement side, if you like. Um, on the, on the education side, we do have a bin inspector in place um, through our contractor and they, uh, that person basically does a round in advance of the trucks passing through, um, tagging the bins, either green, orange or, or red. Um, so it's a type of direct feedback, creating a direct feedback loop to, to residents. Now, because that person only can, do, they can probably do 50 to 100 properties a, a day um, clearly, we're not. We know we, we've got over forty thousand in the hut, so it's going to take quite a long time to get through uh, the whole area. So there's clearly some idea, other educational work that needs to play a role. You know, both advertising, social media, and those sort of um, you know leaflets, flyers, that sort of thing. But also, we're looking at um, this won't be happening this year, given we're nearly at Christmas. But it's something that we're just looking at uh, doing a trial to have a potentially working with a community group to basically cover a whole suburb in, in a day. So we've, so the idea is that we got an army of volunteers going out and tagging every bin in a particular area and to see whether we can then, um, it's a concerted push to educate and provide, a, you know, provide immediate feedback on, on how they are performing in terms of recycling um, cleanliness and those sort of things. So that's, that, that's what we're looking at for early next year. Again, what I mentioned earlier, though, is that if there's one thing that we currently don't have, it's people power. <laughs> we don't have enough staff and time to do all those things. So um, there's a fair bit of um, work to be done. So that was the curbside rollout. Um, there is the, uh, I guess, more topical is the um, hazardous waste drop-off facility that we uh, implemented at Silver Stream Landfill. So that's now moved from a previously a sort of a, a passive drop off. You just leave stuff there. Uh, it was unsupervised and we've now moved into a supervised or at least partially supervised during the week, not every day, but um, uh, basically all of the weekends and a couple of the weekdays, you have a staff member there that then basically sorts materials into the right, um, into the right, um, types of substances, um, given that we don't want to mix certain things. Uh, so that's now operational uh, since for the last couple of weeks or so, and that now replaces the hazardous waste um, event that we normally would have run in November each year. 
on the resource recovery park side of things. So we have commenced the procurement process for a new landfill operations um, contractor. So that contract that we currently have with waste management ends in January 2023. And as part of that tender process, we're also looking at the operation of the transfer station as a, as a resource recovery park. So that work still has to be done, you know, in terms of upgrading that transfer station. And, um, and there is some money in the long-term plan in our council to, to enable that work. Although there is still an open question of whether or not it might actually end up being somewhere else. Uh, given there are some limitations at Silverstream to really make this into a state-of-the-art uh, facility. Uh, and then there's some other projects underway. So we've got, uh, well, that were implemented to the green waste diversion from landfill. So since 1st July, that's now going to, um, that's no longer used as landfill cover as previously has been the case. And it's now going to composting New Zealand and, and Carpety, at least for now. Uh, for composting and based on volumes we're estimating about two two and a half thousand tons per year would be diverted through that drop off uh, we're working on an upgrade to the silver stream landfill waybridge system so that's partly to help us with the um, better data and information in line with the waste data framework that's been uh, project that's been bubbling away for the last couple of years and we've never had time to do it and, and now we're doing it. What else is there to cover? Uh, so we mentioned earlier there was some talk about the organic waste uh, collections and processing options. So yeah that's a piece of work that again has been on on my radar for quite a while. Again we haven't had the staff where our senior advisor Wasteman that was supposed to lead this. Um, start with us yet so so it'll now have to happen next year but it's certainly on our uh, on our work program and this goes beyond just the collection so it's it's looking at um, and I don't want to reinvent the wheel because there's plenty of councils that already do that that we can learn from but ultimately it's more than just collecting organic waste or having a neighborhood drop-off point and then you do some composting here um, it's also the processing because ultimately whatever we collect needs to go somewhere and someone needs to do something with it. So it is more than just running our new collection service. Um, and that could ultimately be, uh, I guess, an extended or a, an extended improvement to our existing curbside system that we now have. Um, so that we then potentially add an organic collection service to that for food waste. Uh, and then a couple of smaller ones on the radar. Um, so we're doing a swap analysis, which is a, a landfill, um, basically a waste assessment at the landfill. And we're also going to do a curbside assessment. So that's really looking at, at a household level, the actual contamination in the recycling bins and, and the amount of material collected per household and also the amount of waste and the type of waste per household. So that will be probably in February and it's uh, looking at about probably 250 households, 50 per, per, per day, per weekday. Uh, and that's try, the, the aim with that is to get us a better picture of what's happening at the household level. That given that we do contamination is at the system level. So when a recycling bin truck comes in, it's assessed, it's scoop tested, and they'll work, we'll work out the contamination rate, but it doesn't give us a good household level understanding of what's actually the problem materials at the household. At the household level. So those are the um, sort of the key projects and um, activities underway at Hutt City Council, aside from some of the regional work that, that's happening as well. So the licensing work, obviously, um, that has already been mentioned earlier by Emma. That's me. Kia ora, Jern. That's um, really good and very interesting and um, fully agree with the organic, you know, full system approach. Um, I've got a few questions, unless anyone else has, uh, would like to go before me for Lower Hutt. Okay, 
I, I get to I get to go on this. So you and I've got a few questions, but they should be quite quick. Um, just with the new curbside bin service rollout, and actually, Councillor Edwards, I'd love to have a cup of coffee and talk about your political experiences over that transition at some point. Um, but yeah, just are you expecting a reduction in general waste through the service being upgraded and better? Um, and then another question, how much did you put into your LTP for the resource recovery um, park? And fourth, uh, third question is just the swap analysis. Can I just answer the first two questions? Yeah, sure. Just um, so we don't forget stuff. So on the on the resource recovery park, there's about two and a half million in our long-term plan for, for upgrades to the Silver Stream transfer station. Great, thank you. And um, on the, what was the recycling question? Oh, just are you expecting any um, waste reduction through oh. the upgrade of the curbside, the new curbside uh, system? Well, yes. So in principle, yes, because we've we've uh, increased the capacity for mixed recycling to be collected. Um, and it's probably a little bit early days to compare numbers. Um, but ultimately, you know, the, it will hold a lot more than the crates, um, and and it won't be as con well. Ideally, it won't be as contaminated as some of the material that was collected at recycling stations that we no longer have. So I would expect once the service is really better in, that there would be an uplift in terms of what we collect and and um, uh, both mixed recycling and glass. On the on the on the green waste side of it, because we have an opt-in green waste service. We estimate that based on the first few months of green waste, and I'm, I'm you know, I'm acknowledging that this is like winter months, mm. we should uh, we should probably divert at least 1,200 tons of green mm. waste. Now, that's obviously something that we didn't have previously. So again, that would be, uh, well, there should be a net increase in the amount of waste diverted. Although I do want to acknowledge that because some people that now have waste bins as opposed to bags, it may well be that they also put some green waste into it that they previously might not have. So it's difficult to compare the numbers because we don't have, we didn't have good data before. We now have a lot better data, but we can't necessarily compare them easily, right? Right, yeah, fair enough. Okay, no, it'll be good to see how that, that goes for you as well. Um, the last question was the swap analysis. Is that the same as the waste assessment? Yes, and, and that's at the landfill. So we're doing two bits. We're doing one at the curbside level, and that's just to help us with more with our curbside system, understanding contamination and you know the amount of waste per household, that sort of variation. And, uh, and then the swap, which is happening at the landfill, which is actually understanding what goes into it. Great. Yeah. That's awesome. Thanks, Ewan. Councillor Edwards. Yeah, I was just, your question, uh, Madam Chair, on uh, whether we hope to see the amount of waste reducing. I'm, I'm very pleased and proud of our officers. We've just uh, discussed uh, slight increases to the charges for our various sizes of rubbish bins, and um, officers have kept the price for the smallest bin, the 80-litre bin, the same, whereas the others have gone up. So there's another incentive for people mm. to think, oh, well, hang on, well, what can I recycle? How, how, how else can I reduce my waste? A, a monetary incentive. So I'm, I'm really pleased they've done that. Oh, great. Yes, I, I, I would love to hear how that works for you as well. That's exciting. I, I agree with the monetary incentive. I'm a bit tight and so don't like using rubbish bags myself. <laughs> um, okay, any other questions for the hut or can we move on to the wairarapa? Great. Okay. Thanks, Ewan. That's awesome. Okay. Oh, Wait it up, please. please. Sorry, I got my hand up. Oh, sorry, Steve. We can't. We can't see you. Oh, that's but okay. please uh, fire away. Uh, yeah, I was wondering um, around the pay as you throw type bins. Um, is there any looking at introducing those type of ones um, for those who really don't use much waste and don't really fill a bin? Uh, is that an option that's being considered in the future? Uh, so, so the the decision of 
whether or not the hut goes with the rates funded system or a pays you throw system i mean that was made in september last year and i need to just emphasize the different the systems are not just mixable per se they are just fundamentally different different one is targeted a targeted rate and you just um everyone is in you, you have no ability to opt out with a pay as you throw system you effectively have an ability to opt out you can basically just get a pin in your driveway and never use it so um it's more akin to uh, a bag service like um some councils like upper hut still have uh, you can either choose to use a bag or you don't um, in terms of the incentive to for a, a small household or a, a lower waste user, so we do have that in play at at Hutt City Council, and that's through the different bin sizes. And I know this is um, pretty reasonably unique. They're actually, when you look at say Hamilton, for example, um, they have also rolled out a new system in July, and they did not have or did not give people the ability to choose different bin sizes. Which is creating a few issues for them, especially for for larger households. So we had different bin sizes to acknowledge that the difference and to allow for you know different household sizes and for different incentives at different price levels. So the smallest bin size, um, eighty liters, is um, uh, I think it's one hundred and five dollars per year. Now, when when you when you look at that, that actually is really cost effective. So, so let's say you had a, a pay as you throw bin, you would have to use the throw, pay as you throw bin, you know, every say three or four weeks to get to get the same sort of price impact. Um, so, I think I did the numbers a few months ago. There's less than it's less than um, seven or eight percent of the population that would be better off with a pay as you throw bin, at least financially. So it's a relatively small share of the of the city that would benefit from from that. Um, so the smallest bin size that we currently have is a proxy of of you know acknowledging the the, the lower waste users. And at least in the latest round, what Ed, um, what Simon um, Councillor Edwards has just mentioned, we've um, proposed to keep the charge for the smallest bin the same, which would further increase the the you know. The incentive to um, to reduce waste, if you like, but um, waste size. But so bin sizes overall, um, and the you know providing a monetary incentive is only one of uh, many objectives that we're trying to achieve. Of course, the other ones are, you know, reducing carbon emissions, um, uh, keeping a system, you know, having a service that is safe. So all the objectives that we have during the re that we had during the review stage, and and um, so going for a pay as you throw bin does really well on the on you know giving people choice but it doesn't do so well on some of the other objectives so um, at this point there's no plans to introduce one because that decision was made in september last year but we're of course always looking at possibilities to um, how, how do we incentivize low waste users further awesome thank you very much Thanks, Jörn. Okay, Joe, would you like to, to take away the next part for Wairarapa? Yeah, sure, thanks. I'm just gonna just briefly go over some of the highlights um, and then if there are any questions about anything else at the end would be great. So um, one of our focuses this year was around our signage at um, transfer stations. So um, I know some transfer stations have had issues in the past. And so we were trying to align that to make it clear um, for everyone how how that looks in the sense that it can be very confusing. So what we've done is, um, and we haven't haven't quite got to the end of that yet. Um, we're hoping to have them up before now. So um, they are quite bold, colorful, um, bilingual signage, um, and that will be rolled out for the Martinborough Transfer Station and Dalefield and Carterton, as well as the Masterton one. Um, and they'll all be aligned the same. Um, and that's um, aligned with the Patakori symbols and colors. Um, so that's going to be a huge positive um, at our transfer stations to, to have that consistency. Um, also, I just wanted to talk about um, some of the open space bins that we've talked about. Um, for some reason, um, we have not had contamination issues around those like other regions have. Um, and I think that's purely for us was because we decided that 
we would get our um, upgraded curbside uh, wheelie bin rollout um, information and having people to actually adapt to that to make sure they got it right before we put those out in the public spaces. So it seems like our um, we got it right. So we haven't done any campaigning around any of the open space bins and that it also includes our um, shipping containers at our beaches and our um, some rural places. So um, we've been really fortunate that both those um, recycling um, station um, options have actually worked really well and we actually have had really low contamination rates. I've checked them. I don't, there's never anything that's out of, that's a miss and I, I'm dumbfounded why we seem to have struck it lucky. Um, but I think that's going back to getting our curbside um, wheelie bins recycling right from the beginning. Um, and educating people. So behaviour change for us was, was really key. And so we felt that we had to get that right before we implemented the others. So um, yeah, that's worked really well. I think aligning that too, we um, also spent um, some time getting the zero waste education um, program up and running and really hitting that really hard. Um, and I think at the moment, we've probably gone to maybe 10 to 12 schools over the water up in the last year or so. Um, and that's probably up to about 1,200 kids that we've, we've gone through. Um, through that is also um, acknowledged that um, the collaboration with other educational um, programs or initiatives um, throughout our region that we are collaborating more with. So with that, we have actually um, started a um, Waraka Environmental Education Forum, very similar to the Wellington one that we have been a part of. So we decided now that we have enough groups in the Wairarapa to be able to do that. Um, and we're working together a lot more. So um, in the future, it'll be more aligning with each other. I know um, uh, one thing with waste audits around schools in particular and businesses, there's more and more requests around that. So between Parakore, the councils and um, Enviro schools, we have um, agreed to share that role. So in the future, if any one of us are approached and we, we don't have the resources, we will pass that on to one of the others. So we're trying to work a lot more collaboratively within the Wairarapa with other groups. So um, that's actually been really helpful because we're also very supportive of each other and um, we are probably less resourced. So um, it's actually helping each other um, spread that, that word of um, minimizing our waste in the Wairarapa. So hopefully this is a new kind of um, way of doing things for us in the Wairarapa um, by supported, being more supportive of each other. So I think there's gonna be more that come from that um, and we're really positive about that. Um, that's all I really just wanted to briefly talk about, um, but if there's anything else anyone wants to ask, feel free to ask any questions. Kia ora Jo. Um, does anyone have any questions for the Wairarapa? Um, <clears throat> there may be being a user of your recycling in the beaches, your, you know, your stations there, that's really good news to hear that. Um, you, that's a, you do a really good job at having those in strategic places. Uh, I have a husband who's a surfer, so we end up in some weird, wild and wonderful spots. But yeah, it's always uh, provides that, uh, that feeling that the community is caring for its environment, so that works well. And congratulations too on the um, yeah the bilingual signage and the parakore. Um, so can I just ask a question? I'm not familiar with that, but how does that fit in with the? Are we using a wasteman standard signage? Does it does it work together? Yeah, so um, that is the recommendation from Wastemans that the, right. the ones that parakore developed. So um, and that was to standardise it. So it's it's all those symbols, those colours that are all aligned. Um, so I, I haven't heard of any other council in, in New Zealand that have, have gone with this approach. <coughs> so we may be first off, but we're more than happy to share it when we've, we've got it out there. Um, yeah, and yeah. just aligning yeah. it really. Yeah, and making it clear and concise. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I'd love to see some images. If, if you feel like it, just flicker through a few through to the, the group. That would be really yeah. good. Yay, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, well, I think that... Um, nearly concludes. I guess I just would, did have that question. I just wanted to know if anyone had on hand um, just any information on particularly those with landfills, because I think you, we can understand, but did we, 
Was there a reduction or an increase in um, waste to landfill for the past year? You don't need to say how much, but just if you know if there, what that was like, because I think it would be good to get a sense check throughout the region. Can anyone speak to that? Kia ora, David. Yeah, um, yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, just from Spicer perspective, um, we had obviously at, uh, through the lockdown period last year, an immediate drop um, that was um, all the, the commercial uh, waste not being picked up. Um, it didn't fully recover, uh, is my understanding. And a lot of that I, I recall mentioned before of the uh, transfer of the waste to other places. But if um, you consider there is still a, a depression in business in, in the Wellington CBD, um, there's other places like that. So um, we also had a, a, an immediate drop through the two week lockdown through August um, this year as well. Overall, however, our waste has continued to climb and climb and climb. Um, and the, um, one of the major factors in that is um, the construction and demolition waste we're getting. So that will account for or make up for anything else that we're losing. So um, as the year has progressed, we have continued to um, receive increasing tonnage. Great, and, and we'll get a good sense of that in the waste assessment next year. We, what um, types yes, of we waste will, you've got coming through? Yeah, um, once we've done an, an, an analysis, um, uh, yes. Um, but with regard to the actual data, as, as you know, um, Chair, I, I do report regularly to the Waste, Water, Treatment, Plant and Landfill Committee as well and, and drop that graph on each time. Yep, great. Thank you. Thank you, David. That's good. Anyone else? Joe. Yeah, I just want to point out, um, I noticed um, in our data, I'm just being mindful that we are well aware that on our figures um, it shows a decrease. However, that decrease is relevant to um, waste going out of our region. So um, it may be collected right. from here, but it's actually taken somewhere else. So um, I don't know if anyone else is, is, is noticing that trend, but I just, just, just being mindful of that, um, that we are aware that that is happening to us. So um, it doesn't, sh it, it, in the figures it shows that we're decreasing, but in fact, it's actually increasing. It's just working out um, that number um, that's going out of our region, which obviously we, we it's very hard to yeah. track that. So I just wanted to point that out to people if you're not aware of that as well. Yeah, thanks, Joe. That's that's important. Otherwise, we'll think you're superstars and be running over there to see what you're doing. Okay, um, Hutch Silverstream, can anyone speak to that? Yeah, I can speak to that. Uh, I'm happy to share a screen if that's doable. Yeah, Otherwise, that'd be great. Talk. Thank you. Oh, I don't know uh, if that. Um, oh, let me just try if that works. Can you see that? Oh, yes. I ignore ignore it's a, it's the. It's a bit big for numbers. Monday morning. <laughs> yeah. So if you look at that orange graph, it's you know it goes from 110, 120 thousand tons all the way up to 150, 140 in the last couple of years. So it's going up. Right. Still. Okay. Uh, and ignore the numbers because that's like total levy collected and all sorts of things. But um, mm -hmm. there is. Uh, Joel just mentioned that, you know, some of the, um, let me just stop sharing the screen so I can see you again. Hmm. Stop, oh, hang on, here we go. Um, so uh, the, I can tell you that some of the water upper rate waste actually ends up in Silver Stream and so right. does uh, the, some of the waste from Otaki. <laughs> so, uh, mm. that, that that's Silver Stream might be owned by Hutt City Council, but that doesn't mean that it's all lower hut waste. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Thanks, Jörn. That's awesome. Um, Welly, can we do we have an update on our annual figures? As in, do we have an increase or a decrease? Um, in terms of waste volumes, they're pretty static. Pretty so pretty flat lined. Yeah. Yep. Great. And Kapiti, do you I know that you don't also 
do your own landfill. Uh, Madam Chair, I wonder if I could just raise a point with regard to um, spicer landfill. Yes. Yeah, um, just to be aware, I mean, we, we, are, we do know that um, around 75% of what comes into Spicer is not from Pori River City. Um, right. It comes from around the region and as far north as Palmerston North and, and Whanganui, um, Horafanua and KCDC. I guess the point is just to be cautious that if we were looking to um, use the uh, landfill here, as a proxy for uh, waste reduction within the district, we haven't really got the very best um, guide because so much of ours comes from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And um, that'll be the same for Silverstream um, and probably to, to maybe not to the same extent, but um, for Southern as well. Um, so we are to an extent at the mercy of, you know, waste reduction measures in other districts um, and well outside of us and outside the region as well. Mm, so it's still hard to get a regional snapshot. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it is good so, to, to um, get a sense check. Thanks, Ruth. Yeah. So uh, to be honest, I'm not quite sure what our data is doing at the moment, but um, large majority of it now is going to Bonnie Glen. We're no longer disposing to Hokio landfill. Um, so I don't know where the stuff from Motoki is coming from because I understand the majority of that is now also going to um, Bonnie Glen Landfill. Um, but our biosolids um, do, from our waste water treatment plant, uh, do go over to Silver Stream. Um, that's no doubt not reducing because our population's um, going up. Yeah. And, and then the other comment is also um, to be careful that we take um, not to use our own landfills as an assessment of waste because, of course, we have all the construction and demolition fills as well, and that is a huge proportion of the waste, and we have no idea really what's happening with that. And then with the new legislation as well around housing, you know, I, I just think we're going to see a tsunami of houses being demolished, single houses on properties being demolished so that people can put up three times three-storey buildings. So, um, yeah, I think we've got quite a big hurdle coming there in terms of that uh, housing decision. That's a really good um, yeah, thing to point out, Ruth. Thank you for that. Um, okay. Still useful to have that conversation, so thank you. I think regionally just getting a view of, of where it's going and um, yeah, just, just in summary, probably we're still increasing waste rather than reducing. Okay, um, so with that, I think we've, we've wrapped up the, the reports and that's been really um, useful. This is the last chance for any questions, if anyone has them, before we go into the paper into moving the paper. Okay, great. So then um, I would like to, to move this paper, the Regional Waste Management and Minimisation Plan Implementation Update. Always a mouthful. Um, I'm sure everyone's read the officer recommendations, mostly around noting. And just, Haiti, if you can scroll up, I've also um, just asked for three um, amendments to um, come, come through as well. But I would like to just get officers' feedback on this before we... Um, so actually, I'll move the paper first, get a seconder, and then we'll ask questions. Yes, okay. So I will, would like to move the paper. Is there a seconder, please? Councillor Edwards, I'll take you as the deputy, just to remind you. <laughs> um, thank you. So great. So just before we go into um, debate, I would like to, well, actually, I would just like to um, get officers' feedback on these um, recommendations or these amendments that they are... Um, yeah, they're comfortable with them and they're not too onerous in terms of work. Maybe, Emma, are you... Or maybe... Yeah, that's all right. Emily, are you able to provide feedback? So the first um, amendment is around expanding 
to consider expanding organic waste collections and composting um, in Aotearoa report, which came through as a Greenpeace report and was presented at the uh, forum on Friday. So I thought just a good one to have in that um, mix as we're making decisions or going forward with uh, food waste collection. So it's just, uh, um, yeah, are you happy to consider that report as part of the overall work? Uh, yes, from a Wellington City perspective, we're comfortable with that, but I'm not sure if any of the other officers have any feedback. Uh, from Heart City perspective, there's no issues with that particular one. It'll be just one among a number of reports <laughs> that are considered as part of the business case and feasibility work that we would be doing, yep. Great, thank you. Councillor Elliott. Um, thank you. Um, through you, um, Madam Chair, I'm wondering if we want to consider a fourth uh, new uh, recommendation that we note the future concerns around um, the amount of construction and demolition waste that will be um, potentially have an effect on the outcomes. Mm -hmm. If so, I'm happy to move that. Yeah, I'm happy to and just... Um, note, have that as a note and put this in the main um, substantive. I think that's really important going forward and it's good that it's been raised by officers today. Yeah, thanks Ruth for, for mentioning yeah. that. Thank you. Yep. All right. Um, Councillor Elliott, could you provide, have you got time to just put through some wording for that for Heidi? Um, yes, I'll do it right now. Right now? Well, yeah, we can I'll do it in the notes, in the chat. Yes, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Okay. All right. I, I'm just trying to delegate the work because my brain can't multitask on a Monday morning. <laughs> Chat's, Chat's right. disabled, sorry. Okay. Would you... Uh, uh, Hades just enabling it now. Thank you. Great. Um, so just taking a, any other officer feedback on that report being part of the reports that will be considered? Kia ora, Richard. Yeah, thank you. I just um, have a concern, um, and I'm hoping you can address this. The report was commissioned by Greenpeace, and it could be politically motivated. It wasn't an independent report by, um, say, you know, Mayor, or um, uh, any other one of those... Um, um, uh, consulting firms mm. that we generally go to for this sort of advice. So I just wanted to raise that. Mm. Thank you, Richard. And um, yes, I would I would consider that that report would be taken in context with all the other reports as well. That's okay. But thank you for pointing that out. Um, so unless uh, Count uh, David, would you like to contribute? <laughs> Yeah, just, um, just Madam Chair, uh, from PCC perspective, um, no problem here either, but just wanting to um, reflect uh, Richard's statement of, of some caution around the, um, not the intent, of course, but just the origin. Yeah, great. That's good. No, that's uh, noted, and um, I think the... Councillors can deal with that in the debate if they'd like to um, vote for that one or not. Thank you. Um, the next one is just talking about a media update. And um, can I have officers' feedback um, on that, please? Um, can I just clarify, um, Councillor um, Chair, are, are, you, are you looking for a media press release type of um, update or, or I'm just trying to figure out a little bit more what what the intention is of the uh, of that motion no um, good good question Yuen. Um the intention with this is this committee and its work in, in my view are not very visible to the the public on what we are doing so it's just a way to remind the public, if they are out there looking for what the regional committee are doing, that we have had a report and we've had progress and to just announce that and maybe announce next steps as well. So it's a, 
I'm not expecting the, the media release to be picked up, but more that we have put a public statement out about the work that's being done and the achievements of council and next steps. Does that answer the question? Ruth, uh, yeah. yeah. Yes, it does. Uh, I guess the question then is who, which council would actually take the lead on this? Um, I mean, I, I unfortunately I can't commit our comms team because I'm, I'm I would have to talk to them about what they can do, and I'm assuming it might be the same for Wellington City's um, um, staff that are present. Uh, we can talk to the, our comms team and see if they have capacity to draft something up. Um, we just may be working to their time frame. That's mm. all. Mm. Everybody happy with that? Um, and then the eighth was a noting um, regarding some of the conversation that we've had around labour labour shortage being a challenge to achieve some of the work that we've got going ahead. Um, officers' feedback on on that. Are you okay with that? So acknowledge it's an issue. So yeah. Appreciate it's in there. Yeah. Good. Good. I think it would be um, a good safeguard for us as well. But I'll speak to that in the debate. Any other questions on any of these amendments? And we've got Councillor Elliott's coming up now. Go, Heidi. She's so good at this. Yay. Councillor Elliott. Oh, OK. I, I see. Great. Um, and Hades just informed me that do, uh, for the process, we can accept mm -hmm. this amendment with the leave of the meeting. Um, so we'd need a, a, a hands up from just a signal from all of the councillors that they're happy to accept this amendment. Great. Okay. Steve. Steve's okay with it? Great, okay, are the questions and answers sorted? Is everyone happy with where we're at? Yep. Great, so we will then, um, so we have moved the motion, we have a seconder, we have amendments, so I will now ask, is there any debate? Through you, Jim. Um, I just want to seek some clarification on uh, on the six, um, exactly what you would be requesting officers to consider, uh, and what that actually uh, entails in terms of, of workload and what you want to see back. My request here was really about putting this document in the mix of other material for officers to help form their um, recommendations for how we go forward with our organic resource recovery. So it is not seeking any um, Assumption, it is just seeking that this report is considered as part of all reports that they, they will take on board. Does that help? Uh, well, as a follow-up question, um, isn't that kind of done as a matter of course? And why would it need a, a specific recommendation um, when there's a lot of reports that go through that officers would consider as part of that work? Hmm. Uh, wouldn't it be better to, to say that we um, acknowledge the material that has been presented and that we encourage officers to um, consider all reports as part of their look at food waste as opposed to singling it out? I'm just checking why it's there. Um, yes, I think why it was there was because we had at the forum on Friday a particular presentation, so it was more that understanding that that particular report was there, that it had been done, and it could be um, useful for officers to help form their, view, their recommendations. So I'm happy to accept any wording changes if that is important to you. 
to soften or to, if you would like to re recommend changes that you'd like? Councillor Elliott, while I'm waiting for, um, oh sorry, Councillor Taylor, are, are you, would you like to respond to that? Um, not yet, I'm quite happy to go to Councillor Elliott. Okay, um, Councillor Thanks. Elliott, did you Can you hear me? Yes, did you have a question? Uh, no, I was just going to add to debate, if I may. Great. I would love that. Yeah. Kick it, kick okay, it great. Off. <laughs> Yeah, look, thanks. I was just going to, I think all those that attended our, uh, our forum meeting on Friday and, um, and thank staff for such a great job. It was, uh, I found it a really interesting day and I live there. Um, so great for all of you for coming along. I'm, I really support um, this recommendation six in light of that. Uh, so support there for that being as in and as worded. Um, and I, I'm just going to refer to recommendation nine, construction and demolition, and I'll be emailing the chair of the forum straight after this to request that we have another focus on construction and demolition waste theme for an early forum next year in order that we can keep our fingers on the pulse of that and do a little bit of um, updating and see whether we what progress we have and haven't made since the last time we had a, I think the forum in Porirua where we focused on construction and demolition. Um, so thank you all. Kia ora, Councillor Elliott. Um, anyone else for debate? Okay, then I, I would like to contribute. Um, look, I'd just really like to thank all of our officers for the work that's going on here. I know that it's complex and um, lots in there, and then to work together is a really important part of, of how we go forward. Um, and then I understand that this takes a lot of time. And um, yes, I just want to commend all the work that is going on there. Uh, I also want to point out in the recommendations that also around investment. So as we've discussed through this process that um, we know that maybe the next annual plan we will be fine, but this is specifically noting that um, that resourcing and um, that we will need, sorry, I can't find the recommendation here. No, 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 no. That we will need to start, and no, that subject to scope of the next WWMPs in 23 and 24 annual plan and long-term plan processes, it may be critical for councils in securing any financial support necessary for the implementation of the next WMMPs. So I really do um, want, all of you councillors to make sure that you are working with your, your teams and your officers to make sure that funding is available as we go forward and as we can see from the government, what they're doing, we can also get a sense check through from government to our communities that there is a lot of movement in this space. And council has so much opportunity to actually make the changes and have a a democratic process on the way that we do that because we're more localised, but also it's a way for the community to get involved as we've heard um, through some of the discussion that we've had today. I want to acknowledge the amount of waste um, possibly coming through the, sea, the um, up, up take in housing increase, the increase in housing that is required and that the enabling the government is doing. In a report, in a newspaper report recently, it was four and a half thousand tonnes per new home of C and D waste going to landfill. And I think we know that that is not, not sustainable um, but also from a community perspective, we have a lot of movement of trucks through our small streets and it is very, very hard for them to, to have to deal with this uh, continual um, forthcoming of waste through the community and then for the environment to have to take it. But um, 
Yes, I am really also want to make sure that we're all ahead on the waste assessment space, that we have that as part of our work programme for next year, as it will be really important to get a full snapshot of what's happening regionally. And as we can hear by the discussion, that it is already hard to track that, but it is important that we're all part of that process. Um, and in terms of the amendments, thank you, Councillor Elliott, um, for bringing the amendment around yeah, construction demolition. It's really important that that's there. It's important <coughs> to note the labour shortage, but I also think it is really important that this committee has more visibility. Therefore, I am really keen on seeing the One Planet idea or, or something like that progress because we do need our communities to see the work that is going on. So, um, and also, yeah, just to thank the Waste Forum team because that really does help inform what's going on out there in the, um, in the nation so that we can make sure that this committee is, is cognizant of ideas that are going on. But yes, mostly just to thank officers for the work. And that's enough from me. Is there anyone else that would like to contribute to debate? Great, well then I won't need a right of reply. So with that, um, I will now put the motion which has been moved and seconded. So those in favor, please raise your hand. Great, and any against, please raise, oh, actually, sorry, please, Councillor Taylor, would you like to take clause um, six separately? No, I'm happy, I just wanted the clarification around it. Great, okay, so, so unless anyone has any objection, we'll take all of the amendments together? Great, okay, so we'll do that again. So I now put the motion which has been moved and seconded. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Awesome, great, I can't see Councillor Taylor, but he's, he's got a little tick, awesome. Um, so that I declare that motion carried. That means that this is the conclusion of this meeting. Um, like I said, I would invite you to just hang around for another 10 minutes afterwards for a little informal chat on going forward. Um, and I will stand for the karakia. <laughs> Okay. Unu here, unu here, unu here, ki te uru tapu nui. Ki a watia, ki a mama, te ngako, te tinana, te wairua. I te ara takatu. Koi a ra e rongo, whakairea ake ki ronga. Ki a watia, ki a watia, ai ra, ko a watia. Um, kia ora everyone, I really do want to thank you for your participation and contribution today, it's always very enlightening. <laughs>